For us to be able to see an object, light must enter our eyes. Objects like lamps, computer screens, and the sun emit their own light and are called luminous objects. However, most objects are non-luminous, meaning that they do not emit their own light. These types of objects can only be seen because light bounces off them and are reflected into our eyes. White surfaces reflect most light, therefore they look bright, while black surfaces absorb nearly all the light, making them look dark. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and wondered how the image in the mirror is formed? Well, this process is called reflection. Reflection is an occurrence when a ray of light strikes a plain mirror and is reflected. The incoming ray of light is called the incident ray, the outgoing ray is called the reflected ray, and the line at right angles to the mirror's surface at the point where the incident ray hits the mirror is called the normal line. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Let's try to do a sample question. The question says to draw the reflection of light on a plain mirror with an angle of incidence of 30 degrees and label the diagram. To do this, firstly, you have to draw a plane mirror by drawing a horizontal line and shade the bottom of the line. Then, you have to draw the normal by drawing a line perpendicular to the plane mirror. Then it is time to draw the incident ray. It is important that you measure the angle the ray strikes at relative to the normal. The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence, which is 30 degrees, as the question stated. Now that we've got that done, it's time to draw the reflected ray. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Therefore, just like the incident ray, we have to measure the angle relative to the normal. The angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection, which is 30 degrees as well. And that is the complete diagram. Images formed on a plane mirror may have seemed to come from a place behind the mirror. This is because the image seen on the mirror looks exactly the same as the object. However, one big difference is that the image is laterally inverted or flipped. These images are called virtual images because no rays actually pass through the image and it can't be formed on a screen. Now that you've learned about reflection, let's move on to another phenomena called refraction. Try placing a tablespoon inside a glass filled with water. If you take a look closely, you can see that the body of the spoon is slightly bent, especially the part that hits the surface of the water. This bending effect is called refraction. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave passing from one medium to another caused by the change in its speed. Let's use air and glass as our medium. This is a glass block, and the area around it is the air. Similar to reflection, the incoming ray of light is called the incident ray. The line at the right angles to the side of the block is called the normal. The angle between the incident ray and the normal is the angle of incidence. The ray is refracted or bent towards the normal as it enters the glass block. This ray is now called the refracted ray. The angle between the refracted ray and the normal is called the angle of refraction. Because the light ray bends toward the normal as it enters the glass of the block, the angle of reflection is smaller than the angle of incidence. Another term used in refraction is the refractive index. The refractive index is the measure of the bending of a light ray when passing from one medium to another. The refractive index is defined like this. Refractive index equals to the speed of light in vacuum over the speed of light in medium. In a vacuum, the speed of light is 300,000 km per second. However, in a glass, the light slows down to 200,000 km per second. So in case of glass, the refractive index is 300,000 km per second over 200,000 km per second, which is equal to 1.5. A medium with a higher refractive index will have a higher bending effect on light because it slows the light more. An alternative definition of the refractive index is the equation refractive index equals sin i over sin r where I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of refraction. This formula can also be used to calculate the angle of incidence or the angle of reflection when the refractive index is already known. For example, 
The question states that the light in air strikes water at an angle of incidence of 45 degrees. If the refractive index of water is 1.33, what is the angle of refraction? To do this, simply substitute the values into the equation, solve that out, and you get an answer of 32 degrees. Not all the light passing through a medium can be refracted. The inside of glass or other transparent materials can act as a mirror, depending on the angle at which the light strikes. The critical angle is the angle that makes an angle of reflection of 90 degrees. Total internal reflection happens when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, causing all the light to be reflected internally, but none of the light is refracted. The value of the critical angle depends on the material. The critical angle C of any medium can be calculated using this equation. Since C equals 1 over N, where N is the refractive index. Let's try to do a question. The question states that diamond has a refractive index of 2.42. The speed of light in air is 300,000 km per second. Calculate the critical angle for diamond. We have all the values needed, so simply substitute it into the equation, solve that out, and you should get an answer of 24 degrees. An example of the application of total internal reflection in our daily lives is optical fibers. Optical fibers are thin, flexible rods made of special glass or transparent plastic. Light is put in one end and is totally internally reflected and it comes out of the other end. One use of optical fibers are in endoscopes. A nanoscope is an instrument used by doctors and surgeons to look inside the body. It contains a long, thin bundle of optical fibers. Optical fibers can also carry phone calls. The signals are coded and sent along the fiber as pulses of laser light.